Hey up everyone, welcome to the History of Football channel. Today I'll be doing another Forgotten Football Ground as part of the Forgotten Football Ground series. The last video that I did were the Old County Ground, the former home of Northampton Town Football Club. But tonight's video is going to be Sealand Road, the former home ground of Chester City from 1906 to 1990. Chester Football Club was founded in 1885 as an amalgamation of Chester Rovers and the Old King Scholars Football Club and they initially played their home games at Faulkner Street in the Hull area of the city. After a couple of seasons at Faulkner Street, the club was then forced to move and they spent a year at a venue called the Old Showground between Hull Lane and Hull Road but they once again had to make way as this was being turned into a housing project. Now homeless, the club was disbanded for a couple of seasons before being reformed in 1901 and playing at a ground on Whipcord Lane. However, it was of small size and had a tendency to flood, which made it unsuitable for a long-term home for an ambitious club. And the move was made in 1906 to a ground on Sealand Road, which was simply called The Stadium. The first game to be played at Sealand Road was on the 15th of December 1906 against Bangor City. Chester won the match four goals to nil in a league which was called the Combination. During the 1920s and 30s, a concerted effort was made to attain Football League status for the club, so they improved and covered the stands at the ground which included a new main stand opened in 1931. After finishing as runners-up in the Cheshire County League, in the same year, the club were duly elected to the Football League Division 3 North in place of Lancashire side Nelson. The Sealand Road Stadium now had the wooden main stand which was eventually made up of two structures, the covered Sealand Road end known as the Barn and the open popular side terrace and a Spion Cop made of paving stones. It was also said to be one of the first grounds in the Football League to be equipped with a public address system. The first Football League match to be played at Sealand Road when they were elected saw Chester defeat Wigan Borough four goals to nil on the 29th of August 1931 in front of a crowd of 12,625 people. In 1960, floodlights were installed at the ground and these 38 metre high lights were first used in a two-all Football League Cup draw with Leighton Orient. They were officially opened later in the season for a friendly match against Manchester United. In 1979, the look of Sealand Road was significantly changed when a new grandstand was opened, replacing the previous small stand. Towering over the rest of the ground, the 2,874 capacity stand provided improved viewing facilities but was criticised for reducing atmosphere levels as it was detached from the rest of the stadium. In the final years, the other three sides were taken up with the open cop end and covered ceiling end home and popular side, half for home fans and half for away fans. Chester suffered a major blow in August 1989 when it was announced the club had been refused a safety certificate for its away standing areas. This reduced the capacity of the stadium to below 6,000. This was also to be Chester's last season at Sealand Road as they were controversially moved out by their new owners and left homeless at Moss Rose Macclesfield for the next two years. The decision to leave Sealand Road was taken at relatively short notice on the 20th of March 1990 when an Edinburgh based consortium took the club over and announced its intention to redevelop Sealand Road as a supermarket with a ground share to take place elsewhere until a new stadium in the city was completed. The ground sharing deal with Macclesfield Town was not completed until 12th of July, ending fears that the club, then in the third division, could miss the deadline to find a new stadium and, and end up being expelled from the Football League. The final league match to be played at the ground was a 2-0 home win over Rotherham United on the 28th of April 1990, with Graham Abel scoring the final goal in front of 3,827 fans. One of the Rotherham's players that afternoon was Bobby Williamson, who later became Chester's manager. On the 3rd of May 1990, Chester reserves drew 3 all with Tranmere Rovers in the Midland Senior League in the stadium's final ever match. Although Chester had never played in the top two divisions of English football, 
Stealen Road housed several prestigious matches. The most memorable were in the 1974-1975 season, they reached the League Cup semi-finals. They defeated league champions Leeds United 3-0 at Sealand Road in round four, with Newcastle United losing a replay on the same ground in the quarter-finals. This led to Sealand Road becoming the venue for a League Cup semi-final on the 15th of January 1975, when they drew 2 all with Aston Villa in the first leg in front of a crowd of 19,000 people. The record attendance at Sealand Road was set in the FA Cup third round replay tie against Chelsea on the 16th of January 1952. Watched by 20,378 people, Chelsea won the match three goals to two in extra time. Chester City's biggest ever win at Sealand Road was also their biggest ever victory as a club and it came in February 1936. They beat York City 12 goals to nil. The venue also saw the Football League debut of Ian Rush as a 17 year old in April 1979. They played against Sheffield Wednesday that year and it finished in a 2 all draw. The stadium was finally demolished in 1993 and the site now houses the Sealand Road Shopping Park which has nearly 740,000 square feet of retail space. The stand roof was then sent to Port Vale and used for their away enclosure. Since 1992, Chester City and Chester FC have played their home matches at the Diva Stadium, which holds 6,500 spectators and it's located in Bumpers Lane, Chester. So that concludes my video on Sealand Road, the former home ground of Chester City Football Club from 1906 to 1990. Um, over the last 20 to 30 years since leaving Sealand Road, the club was in a lot of financial problems and it was eventually wound up in 2010. In its place, Chester Football Club was um, inaugurated in 2010, the same year, and they currently play in the National League North. They come 16th last year in that division, but slowly but surely, Chester Football Club are looking to make their way back up the football and pyramid and maybe one day play in the Football League once again. So I hope that you enjoyed the video tonight and if you've been to this ground leave your comments in the section below and let me know which ground that you'd like me to do next. There's still plenty of, of these videos to go and um, I'd just like to say thank you to everyone that's recently joined the channel and been leaving comments and been engaging with the channel and that but um, anyway this has been history of football and i'll catch us all later in the next one all right tell you bye for now